Hi, Gary Stearman. Welcome to another edition of Prophecy in the News. Today we have in studio author Tom Horn. By the way, he's written Zenith 2016. We're going to talk about this book, which has a number of extremely fascinating points in it. So stay with us. <laughs> Tom Horn is always a pleasure to talk to. Tom, welcome back to Prophecy in the News. Hey, Gary. Always great to be with you. Thanks for having me. You know, the problem that we have when we start talking is that there's never enough time, and so let's just get right to it. You've written Zenith 2016, and let's just start out with that title. It's a little bit uh, mysterious. Zenith 2016. Yeah, well, of course, originally I got on the subject because... Uh, as we pointed out on some previous shows we did with you on Petrus Romanus and Exo Vaticana, we had uncovered how numerous ancient societies, uh, including Jews, Maya, but also we found even Protestant reformers from 150 years ago, 200 years ago, that for some strange reason, Gary, they were looking into the future, they were trying to determine when would the Antichrist, the man of sin, the false prophet, the great tribulation period, when would that period happen? And for some reason, numerous cultures separated by time and distance picked the years 2012 to 2016. And so this book takes what they've said, why they said it, and then it goes much further in asking the question, did something indeed begin in the year 2012 that is going to reach its apex in the year 2016? Well, you know, Tom, Christians are all often accused of being date setters. Uh, and, uh, of course, the date comes and the date goes and the rapture didn't happen or whatever it, whatever it happens to be. Uh, uh, we get criticized a lot for date setting. And, uh, and yet, we're not the real date setters. The occultists are the date setters, right? A and you've really pointed this out to perfection, I think, in this book. Yeah, well, in fact, you know, we did a show with you a couple of years ago in which we talked about that. Did the Maya say that the world was going to end right. in 2012? And I made the point that no, what they said was actually more interesting. What they said was the end of 2012 was the end of an era, what we would call a dispensation. And 2013, the very year we're sitting in now, according to them, would be the beginning of a final age, and it would be accompanied by numerous things. For instance, many probably don't know that the Maya prophet, the jaguar shaman, talked about the appearance of two great men who would emerge upon the earth at the beginning of the onslaught of this year that starts in 2013. Two great men. When you read what he's talking about, it sounds very much like he's describing the coming of the Antichrist, mm -hmm. the coming of the false prophet. We've talked before how in the Jewish Zohar, 700 years ago, Orthodox Jews who did not believe Jesus was the Messiah, talking about when is their Messiah going to appear. In fact, they said it in the Jewish calendar year 5773, which brings us to September right now where I'm sitting in this studio with you of the year 2013, after which they said the Messiah would slowly begin making himself known to hmm. particular leaders in the world and then eventually would be known by all the world. Why would, what, so what spirit was it? What occultic force was it that is non-Christian in nature that is causing everything from early Mesoamericans to Jews to the Hindus in their Kali Yuga calendar to Cherokee Indians 200 years ago, all of them saying 2012 marked the ending of a dispensation, a new dispensation will begin, and they even describe it as a time when the gods will once again be merged hmm. with humanity. And, of course, later we'll talk about uh, the prophecy that's on the great seal of the United States, also related to the year 2012, 2016. And those prophecies talk about that time when the gods would once again co -emer, uh, would uh, uh, commingle with mankind. You know, it, it sounds like you're talking about a, a, an overall system of belief that sort of stays behind the scenes. But a number of people a adhere to this. And, and there's sort of a synthesis, as I hear you talking, a, a synthesis of, of beliefs from various cultures around the world going way back into the depths of history. But there is a group of people watching these uh, developments very carefully and assigning dates to them and so forth and so on. And 
we think of that as occultism, uh, occult simply meaning hidden or behind the scenes, and certainly there is a behind the scenes method of calculation being carried out by numbers of cultures in the world today. And, and this book, I, I might say, uh, really delves into those in an objective way. Well, also we recognize in terms of theology, we know that demons know something about times and dispensation. They do. Now, they may just be extraordinary tea leaf readers, if you will, that they're like we are. We can see the times and the seasons and we can make determinations about it. Or it could be that they're plugged into an ancient power that happens to know a bit more about times and dispensations. You recall when Jesus went into the valley of Gadara and the demons begin crying out of the wild men. Why have you come here to torment us? But they say, have you come here to torment us before the time? Yes. And that is the Greek word kairos, a specific era of time, an epoch, a period of time that is waited for. And they somehow knew that that time had not yet arrived. The time of their judgment had not yet arrived. So if demonic forces know something about times and dispensations, then it's not much of a leap in judgment to believe that those who are devoted to them, those who worship them, can somehow perhaps be receiving mystical communications from them. And then what? They speak of these future events. They speak of these future dates uh, as a form of great deception to mislead humanity. No, we're not the date setters, but there are people who did set dates and for thousands of years foresaw 2012 to 2016. Now, what this book tries to do is it begins by asking why did these occult societies fascinate about the very period of time that we're living in? And for no other reason than that, it's interesting, right? Right, absolutely. To, to, to know that they were looking yeah. to the day you and I are alive in. But now look around the rest of the world, where we're at in Syria right now. Oh the yes. fact that Isaiah 17, the burden of Damascus, could suddenly be fulfilled before our eyes. We're seeing in transhumanism, scientists doing what was only done once before in the days of Noah. So we also are seeing a lot of other kinds of evidence that, in fact, we may have entered into that time that is known as the end times. Now, I'm really interested in what you're saying, and, and get this, because we, as Christians, uh, look at timing in Bible prophecy, and we're very, very interested in prophecy because Jesus himself talked about the terminal generation. He talked about the coming of the day of the Lord, and Paul talked about all of the societal breakdowns that would be occurring in the last days. And, and so Christians are naturally interested in this. But what you're saying, and what appears in, in Tom's book, by the way, Zenith 2016, <coughs> is a look at the other side. There's another group of people over here who also are fascinated by prophecy, but it's not Bible prophecy. And and. In your book, you take, a, I think, an objective and a very uh, penetrating look at the background of uh, American uh, planning and the people who planned our country. They were great men. They were intelligent men. But they had a prophetic understanding that most Christians are not familiar with. Absolutely. In fact, you know, we, I don't know that we do a great job in our public schools anymore teaching American history. And probably the average young person, at least, that might be watching this program would be fascinated to know that as many as 44 of the 56 signers of the Declaration of Independence were Freemasons. And uh, they were not just American Freemasons, as that would be understood today. These were early American Freemasons, and they were being influenced by European mysticism, uh, over there where, uh, you know, Francis uh, 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 Bacon had yeah. written his book, The New Atlantis. And the occult societies, the secret societies throughout Europe, they were absolutely enthralled with this idea that they were going to create a new world order, a new kind of, of uh, occultic philosophic society. Uh, Bacon believed that the, the mythical Atlantis, he believed it actually existed. And that so long as it honored those ancient pagan gods, it did well, it thrived, it had technology that came from the gods. See, I happen to believe there was some ancient technology that came from those who pretended to be gods. Uh, but Bacon believed that when they turned their back on the gods, then their society crumbled, they were eventually swallowed up by the sea. And he was dedicated to want to build the new Atlantis. He wrote a novel, a utopian novel based on that idea. Well, those influences and money and people were coming into the new world, 
America because political realities in Europe was not going to let them build their new world order, their new occult society. But this was a fledgling country, and it could be influenced to envision this occultic plan. So those influences can be seen in many of the early American founding fathers who were Freemasons, the way the capital city is laid out, the great seal of the United States, other iconic uh, issues that stand that are, that are they're basically like the, 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 the most unrecognized, hidden, but open secrets that are right in front of most Americans that don't even realize what they represent, but it speaks to an occult plan. For instance, uh, take just the first three American presidents. Mm -hmm. uh, George Washington was a deist. Uh, when his own pastor at a church he attended once in a while was asked in, in textbook um, if they believed he was a Christian, he said, so best as I could tell, uh, Washington was a deist. Take the next president, John Adams, actually wrote letters and mocked Christians who believed in the miracle-working power of Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit. The next one, Thomas Jefferson, this guy was so opposed to the divinity of Jesus Christ, he took the New Testament, took a pair of scissors, went through it and cut out all of the references to the deity of Christ, to his miracles, pasted together his own version of the New Testament. Today it's known as the Jefferson Bible. I think it's owned by the Smithsonian. And once in a while they, they put it on review. So a lot of people, they, they think America was founded by these guys as a Christian nation. And that's just not true. But what I like to say is that at least for a period of time, we became a Christian nation despite the occultic plan that those guys were actually committed to. Well, Tom, the way I like to think about it is that the United States has always been driven by a Christian ethos. That is, we have had a history of, of godly leaders. At the right place, at the right time, God raises up godly men. But at the same time, and you take a, a very, I'd, I'd say, uh, um, unbiased, but at the same time a very critical look at American Freemasonry, and you attempt to lay out what they expect to happen. That is to say, they do have expectations. Uh, we started out talking about date setting a minute ago. They really do set dates, do they not? Yeah, in fact, that was one of the most incredible discoveries. What happened, I'll try to make this as quick as I can, I was studying university-level material based on the Maya. What did I, w I didn't want to just take what the New Agers were saying they believed and said. I wanted to read what they wrote themselves. So I had to find English translations. I wound up with the Book of the Kumiel, the Council Book of the Yucatec Maya, which had 500-year-old prophecies. Anyway, it had been translated into English at the university level. And what I was astonished one day uh, to find was that they specifically looked forward and named the year 1776. And in fact, in the translation, it says the colonial count, 1776. They said after which there would be a 13-step countdown ending in the return of their God in the year 2012 to 2016. But what leaped off the pages at me as I'm reading this is, wow, this guy's describing the imagery on the great seal of the United States, where in Roman numerals you have 1776, followed by an uncapped 13-stepped uh, pyramid, and even Freemasons throughout history have said those steps represent distinct periods of time, right. ending in the year 2012, over which is hovering the portentous eye of the god Osiris, or as he was known to the Greeks, Apollo, and even U.S. presidents and vice presidents have admitted that that is a prophecy about the second coming of the God of Freemasonry. But that was astonishing that you had this 500-year-old Mayan prophecy and you had it a, a exactly replicated on our great seal in images. And I wanted to know, was that just a, a fabulous coincidence or were these early Freemasons aware of that belief system and did they incorporate it? into the design and layout of, of the capital city, the Great Seal. And, of course, if people read the book, we'll find out we became private investigators, and we proved irrefutably that they were aware of those beliefs, and then, in fact, they did incorporate Yeah, I think you've done a <coughs> just a marvelous job of documenting this. I, I want to go back to something else, though, and, and this is fascinating to me because, uh, again, we as Christians uh, look for the, the, the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And oftentimes, as Christians, we are criticized. Well, you know, you, you really should keep your eyes on 
the daily work of the Lord and, and, you know, and do his work on earth and forget about all this pie in the sky of trying to figure out when he's coming back. And yet those on the other side absolutely preoccupy themselves with timing. <coughs> and furthermore, the timing that they exhibit coincides with biblical timing, which gives us as Christians great hope. It gives me great hope when I suddenly see other men who don't plan their time, uh, timing of events around the Bible seem to arrive at the same times that I'm thinking about, which leads me to 2012. Tom, for the longest uh, period before 2012, there was a kind of a crescendo building up to that year. And you were a very big part of, of pointing to something that you thought might happen in 2012. Well, 2012 has come and it's gone. And a lot of people are saying, ah, what a fizzle. Nothing happened. Uh, I beg to differ. I think a lot of things happened. And if you look at the world today, what you're looking at is a Middle East shaping up exactly as the Bible said it would with the leader of Russia, the leader of Persia, the leader of Syria, Israel, Egypt in an uproar. Uh, and all of that happened after 2012, by the way, just a sudden explosion of events. Uh, likewise, we're seeing, I think, an explosion of occultic events that are going to lead us toward what you're talking about in this book. In other words, 2012 was not a dud. 2012 really did mark a turning point of sorts. It did, and, and again, we, you and I did shows together two, three years ago, at least a couple of years before 2012. We are doing this in 2010. The, the, one of the first research books into this, Apollyon Rising 2012, was published in 2009. Right. So we were doing shows then saying, trying to convince the world, please don't get hung up on this idea that this represents the end of the world. That's not what anybody is saying. What they were saying was more important, that it is the end of an era. Now, I'm not going to say the Maya were saying it was the end of the age of grace and the beginning, but if you read their prophecies, it sounds like that's what they saw, that, yes. that man's just going to be going along through the end of 2012, and then we're going to turn in the road. Well, I don't need the Maya to tell me that if I look around the world today, a lot of stuff is happening. The Middle East is a boiling pot. We're working feverishly right now on a new book with uh, Terry James, who's been on your show before, and the title of the book is Cauldron. I mean, there's a reason what is happening in the Middle East could be very <coughs> prophetic. Yes. Now couple the years that follow. 2014, Tetrads, Blood Moon, 2015. Right. You've had Mark Biltz on your show before. Sure. Th this hasn't happened. Well, the last time it happened was the, night, was this, uh, uh, the Great Wars of 67, right? The, yeah. the Jewish War. Uh, so In 1948, Israeli, Israeli statehood. Right. And, and now 1492, by the way, which was the great Jewish pogrom in Spain, which drove Jews around the world. Uh, in 1492, by the way, uh, that was the year that Columbus set sail for the uh, for the New World. And, and it's a marker date, if you will. And that was a year of tetrads. Did you know that? Well, I only knew that because smart guys like you and Mark Biltz told me that. And by the way, uh, there is a portion in Zenith 2016 that deals with the tetrads and the blood moons. Right. But I actually consulted with Mark to make sure I wasn't making a mistake because I'm not the expert in that area that he is. And so he actually wrote that part of Zenith 2016 was written by Mark Biltz so that it will be uh, accurate in its presentation. But you have to ask yourself at some point when you start kind of stretching mathematical probability. In other words, all these occultic forces pointing towards something. We haven't even mentioned the fact that 150 years ago to 200 years ago, dozens of uh, Protestant reformers. Now we're talking about the, 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 the pre-runners to evangelical Christianity as we know it today, also setting the dates 2012 to 2016 for when the uh, false prophet and the Antichrist would arrive and the Great Tribulation period would begin. So all of them pointing to it, but now we're in it. We're not pointing forward. We're right in the middle of it. And look what's happening all around the world. Look what's happening in storms and, and all kinds of chaotic behavior. Yes. Look at what's happening with strange signs in the heavens. A, a whole brand new era now of UFO activity. It's happening every single day. These bizarre things are appearing in the sky. Look at what's happening with strange sounds, loud humming sounds that people are hearing all over the world. They, they can't, 
you, they can't figure it makes the hair stand up on their back. They're recording them. The military is recording them. Right. Clanking sounds like the clanking of metal. I mean, uh, you know, Gary, uh, the first time I listened to some of the audio recording, I swear I thought this sounds like one sword crashing against somebody's shield, right? <laughs> it does. Now, I, I mean, is something bleeding over from like the, the other side? Yeah, an atmospheric phenomenon that, that, that's just separating us by the thinnest of veils from something that's going on on the other side. You know, Josephus actually writes of the era of AD 70 when the temple was destroyed, saying that many around Jerusalem heard these sounds in heaven, in the heavens, as it were, as though there was a great battle being waged there. Uh, we seem to have arrived at that sort of time and again, I have to say, people talked about 2012. There were the scoffers. There were the, the firm believers. There were the people who trekked to Mexico, you know, yeah. and, 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 and there were the New Agers. But there were Christians watching all these things as well and trying to put them in perspective. Tom was one of those uh, with the prophecy of the popes. And, and by the way, we're going to be talking uh, uh, more about this DVD, The Last Pope, which uh, is a, uh, a beautiful, beautiful production that, uh, that Tom uh, originated. And uh, when Tom and Chris Putnam wrote about the timing of The Last Pope, 2012, came and went. Everybody said, oh, well, we, we have a new pope, but that didn't really conform to what Tom was saying in advance. But yet we look back, and it did you really were right on the mark, and, and I have to give you credit for that. Well, and and Chris Putnam, too. You know, we both played our role. I'm a different kind of writer and researcher than Chris, and I actually hired a private investigator for part of that. We were looking into the murder of Father Coons, and we're chasing down different trails, trying to find out, you know, are there, uh, are there highly placed cardinals? Are there true believers in the prophecy of the popes? Because... If you listen to just some in the media, they'll say, well, the Vatican, they, they, they don't take no position on this. They think it's bogus. Well, we found out that isn't true. We found out about 50% of the cardinals think there might be something to it. Even, even Vatican historians that wound up in this movie, The Last Pope. World Net Daily produced that. We'll talk about it, I guess, in the next show. Yes, we will. But they, they actually <laughs> sent people to Rome to go to the Vatican to talk to the authorities. And, and we found out that about half of the people that were interviewed really believe there's something to it. And it, again, Gary, again, th there is a point where it starts feeling mathematically improbable. Yes. That you had the conclusion of a 900-year-old Catholic prophecy. You've had the conclusion of a 700-year-old Jewish prophecy. You've had the conclusion of the, the Mesoamerica. Now you've got the conclusion of the prophecy on the Great Seal of the United States, at least as it is being believed by certain members inside of Freemasonry. Uh, and yet, as, as we would strictly look at biblical prophecy, what part of biblical prophecy right now can we not see unfolding literally before our eyes or poised to unfold before our eyes? Everything that Jesus outlined, you read Matthew 24, read uh, Luke 17, everything that he talked about. Uh, seems to be rapidly unfolding. And there, I, I, I have to just admit that I have an ominous feeling about where we are right now. If we go through this and nothing develops and another thousand years elapse upon the earth, then I'll just keep doing what I do and writing and preaching, and you will too. And, and so will I. So will you. But, I've, but I pastored for 25 years, and I once in a while would preach on prophecy. And I remember even 15, 20, you know, or 20 years ago, uh, it, it was pretty hard. I'd have to kind of really look around. Was there any earthquake activity, something I could point to maybe? Man, not now. Not now. Everything is unfolding. It's all unfolding it's societally, geophysically. Uh, it, things are happening all over the world. Let's go back now to the, to the, uh, the centrality of, of the issues that you cover in Zenith 2016. Uh, you talked for a moment ago about the Great Seal, and and how it had a basically a, uh, has a ba a basic pattern of prophecy is what I'm trying to say. But so does the city of Washington D.C., and you include a lot about that in your book. The city of Washington D.C. is not your normal city. Yeah, and hopefully we'll actually have time maybe in the next show if we get a chance to talk about some more of the details because you first mentioned the Great Seal. How many Americans know that the Anuet Coeptus, the Latin motto above that all-seeing eye, 
is actually taken from Virgil's Aenid. And what it describes, Gary, is interesting because it's talking about the god Jupiter or Zeus, who some would identify as kind of the, the Roman and uh, I Greek version of, of, the, of Lucifer, this great antithesis of God, right? The, but, but it speaks of a time when Jupiter is going to once again try to claim his authority over the cosmos. Now, we know that event is coming. Lucifer tried it once. He was kicked out of heaven. But another war is coming, right? The motto below that, Novus Ordo Socorum, speaks of the coming of his son incarnate on yes. earth in the person of Apollo. So how many Americans know that the great seal of the United States is a prophecy about, the about this final uh, claim to rule the cosmos by this satanic figure while his son becomes incarnate on earth in the person of of Apollo. Wow. And we're just getting wound up. I mean, literally, we have just opened so many avenues of conversation here, all of which are covered in depth in Tom Horn's new book. It's called Zenith 2016. It is a good read, a very informative read, and it will show you, I think, as a Christian, that the time has come. Uh, this production, by the way, The Last Pope, uh, is, is astoundingly done. Uh, Joseph Farah, World Net Daily, produced this. Uh, it is wonderfully done. It is a mystery. It is a, an informative documentary that will carry you from beginning to end. It's a wonderful thing to, to view. <coughs> now, we're offering uh, these two items, the book, The Last Pope, with Tom's previous two books, Petrus Romanus, and Exo Vaticana, all for thirty nine ninety five. This entire package, which we're calling the Zenith 2016 package, we're offering to you for uh, thirty nine ninety five plus shipping and handling. Now, this would be about an eighty dollar value, and this is an absolutely astonishing offer. <laughs> and I'm the one making it, and I'm saying, "Wow, can we do this?" Yes, we can. And there's so much information here, and and, and so much that you need to know about. Call the 800 number on your screen. Ask for the Zenith 2016 package. Yours for $39.95 plus shipping and handling would be about $80 if you bought all the items separately. Tom, we're going to do another program. Okay. And we're going to try to close up some of the doors we've opened today. <laughs> okay. And uh, we'll see you next time. Uh, listen, Tom, what are you working on now in about 10 seconds? Because it's got to be something exciting. Uh, yeah, well, we're working on a documentary on transhumanism. It actually features one theologian by the name of Gary Stearman. Transhumanism. Do you believe in it? Well, if you don't, <clears throat> I think you'll be surprised. Things are happening so rapidly, and it's all according to, I think, discernible timing. You know, the time is here. The time is now. He's coming. Keep looking up, everybody. Prophecy in the News is a viewer-supported program made possible by our many friends around the world. Be sure you tune in every day for breaking news and our daily prophetic news updates at prophecyinthenews.com or follow us on Facebook at facebook.com slash prophecyinthenews.